Hey good people, welcome back to Beauty in the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. So I waited so long to do my February roundup. I was like, I'm not gonna fall behind this time. So today I am doing my March roundup. I think I've collected everything that I tried this month and it's sitting right here. And I wanna do just some speed reviews here, let you know what I liked, what I didn't like, just so you can see how I'm enjoying the things in my collection since I first introduced them on the channel. So if you wanna see all the products I tried in March and hear what I'm thinking about them, keep watching this video, let me know what you think. And if makeup is your therapy and your love, if it makes you happy and you wanna connect with another enthusiast that feels the same way, definitely consider joining the community because I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. All right, y'all, I'm not even gonna do it. Y'all know what palette this is. The child. I had to, I take my mic off. I had to because I have on my child's shirt, see? I am gonna be watching it over spring break, hopefully. All right, I tried a lot of things this month and I like to save the eyeshadow palettes for the end because that's what I tried the most of. So we're gonna start with a primer this month. Now this primer is by Danessa Myricks. This is the Color Fix Invisible Eyeshadow Base. I'm not a fan. I just wasn't into it. And I feel like the eyeshadow was catching on this primer. I don't feel like it really dried down. And it could have been my own error, but I, I'm not a fan. This is what it looks like. I had used it in one of my videos and I just felt like the eyeshadow, the matte that I was using was catching on it and it, it made it look patchy. So it wasn't my favorite. Lately I've been using the Urban Decay Primer Potion in the shade Eden and before that I was using my Glam Light Icing Primer. So I usually switch between those two. This was a fail for me. Like I said, it could have been user error, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the, the empties can because I, I'm just not gonna be using this. So there it goes. This is my Glam Glue from the Glam Shop. I hadn't used this in a while, but I decided to use it for some video. And when I tell you my eyelids were on fire, they were in the flames. I don't know why my eyes were burning like this. I don't know if it expired. Maybe I put on too much. I'm not sure what happened. I know that my friend, Dr. Ash from Dr. Ash and Her Makeup, I believe she uses this and likes this, but this is going in the empties can because I cannot have my eyes feel like that. It was just not practical for me. So that's where that's going. I can't do that. I can't believe I actually have all these fails. Okay, this is the Beauty Pie Japan Fusion Pure Transforming Cleanser with antioxidant vitamin C and grape polyphenols. No, let me tell you, let me get the box. So I'm new to Beauty Pie, but this is supposed to have a, a moisture lock complex in it that gives you some moisture and firmness, some Jabara extract, which is rich in vitamin C, and it, it's supposed to help with pigmentation, and then Delamith, which comes from the Delaware grape. This is supposed to help soothe the skin. And then there's some vitamin E. Now, here's the thing. You're supposed to put this on and then I guess lather it up. I just feel like it didn't lather up. It's supposed to help remove the makeup. I didn't feel like it lathered up. I just felt like it was dry. I'm used to like very creamy cleansers, foamy cleansers, and this just didn't, it didn't get that way. I need some lather. I need some, I don't know what I need, but it, it, it wasn't this. So this is the consistency here. And even when I added water to it, and there's no smell, it just didn't lather. It just didn't do what I needed it to do. And I felt like I still needed to use another cleanser with it. So I usually use this first and then I use my regular cleanser, whatever that may be at the time. But right now it's the Inky List Hyaluronic Acid Cleanser. So I will not be repurchasing this from Beauty Pie. This actually came in the welcome set that I bought because with the membership, it came with like four of their most popular products. What is new? No, 
am. Let's move on to blushes. I've got some blushes. Let's talk about the Milk Bionic blush. This is the shade Infinity. So here's how it comes. It's very petite. There's the shade Infinity. So you can see it's one of those sheer skincare type of blushes. It is reminding me a bit of the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Blush. So I did not have a problem with this blush at all. No fragrance or anything with this. I think it's fine. I think it is kind of the same as the Laura Mercier blush. You don't need to get both. It has a sheer pigment and a dewy appearance that you can build up. And I think it melts into the skin very nicely. Definitely not a must have, didn't need both of these blushes. And if I remembered that I had this, probably wouldn't have got the Laura Mercier one. What a shame. Cause I got similar shades in both it looks like. So in March, I also purchased the new Weightless Veil Blush Palettes from Wayne Goss. I initially purchased Desert Blossom, which is this one here. And I wanted this because it had that rose gold highlighter because honestly, I couldn't and kind of still can't tell the differences between the blushes, but that was that. And then I went ahead and got Sweet Wildflower, which has the champagne highlighter. When I swatch these on my hand, you can really see that there's not much difference. I think this is the Sweet Wildflower, which is the deeper one. And this one is Desert Blossom. So on the face, it's not gonna show up that different. And here are the highlighters. So this one is the rose gold and this one is the champagne. I would not say that you need both of these blushes if you were looking at them. You really only just need one. I happen to be a fanatic about shades like this, just like I love the Pat McGrath Desert Orchid blush. Blushes like that for me are like my perfect shade and they go with any makeup look. So most of the time I do do my face first and I usually have everything done before I do the eye look and if I impressed for time or, or I don't want to choose a blush after the look I'll put on one of those blushes because I just know it goes with everything now I don't think that blush is gonna work for every skin tone however Wayne Goss his first blush launch was extremely pigmented I have two of his previous blushes I have bright poppy and vivid azalea and those are very, very pigmented. Like I can only use the tiniest bit. I do feel like he has a nice blush range, but if you like these more subtle blushes, I think they're great. You just don't need both. Apparently I thought I needed both though. Now the last blush that I brought out and hadn't used in such a long time is this NARS Orgasm X Cheek Palette. I'm not sure, but I feel like this is when the Orgasm X came out and there was a teeny little eyeshadow palette that came with this and a lip oil that was in the collection. They didn't, they were sold separately, but I still like this palette. It's an oldie but goodie. So you have the classic orgasm, you have the orgasm X, and then you have the highlighter that goes with this. And I do enjoy, I do enjoy. And here are the shades to that palette. Now I don't think you can purchase this palette now, but you know there is not a shortage of NARS Orgasm blushes or Orgasm X. I know that they have a bronze and blush combo out now. And there is one that has Orgasm X if you like that with a bronzer and then there's one that has the traditional orgasm with a bronzer and that's from their summertime collection so or you can just buy the blushes separately so this was just cute to have all in a compact and as i said this is probably in like a year and a half old so i don't know i really like it it says 12 month shelf life but it still performs great so we are going to keep this in the collection okay so i did try two new lipsticks in the month of march so the first one is the lipstick that I purchased when I purchased the Wayne Goss blushes. This is a new shade and this is the shade Iris. And here it is. And honestly, I couldn't tell much of a difference between the lipsticks either. So I just picked one. I really do love this color. I can't say that his lipsticks are anything super special, but I enjoy wearing it. I'm not like, oh my God, I have to get more of these. I would not say that this is a, a must. The blushes though, 
I love those blushes. They are some of my favorite, and I know I didn't say that, but they really are. Now, the second lip product I tried is the YSL Candy Glaze lipstick, and it's like that shiny, shiny lipstick that every single brand is coming out with now. I have actually been a fan of the YSL Beauty lipsticks for a while. I don't have like the lipstick. I have I have them in this type of formula. It's like the balm. I love them. I love the smell. It's like a fruity smell, but it's not like a flower smell like the Gucci ones, even though I still like the Gucci ones too. But this is the shade Chili Glaze, and you can see just how shiny it is. And here it is. This has a little stickiness to it. It's not as sticky as the Charlotte Tilbury ones that I talk about all the time. And let me grab one of those Charlotte Tilbury ones because I feel like I mentioned them when I'm comparing these lip shine formulas and I never have the Charlotte Tilbury one out. So let me grab it because it's right here. So the first thing that I tried that was like that new formula was this. This is the um, Hyaluronic Lipstick Lip Balm. These are the stickiest ones I've tried, I think but that's the shade too. It's like a lipstick balm. It's almost like a gloss in a way. And uh, I, I do enjoy these though. Now I'll, I'll talk about this next month, but I think my favorite out of all of them are the Dior ones because they give you the shine without the sticky. And let me, while I'm here, let me grab a, a Makeup by Mario one. Cause I guess this should be on the list too. This is the Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum. And this is Mocha Glow, I have two. And all of these formulations, you click them up. And let's see, this one's a little sticky, but I think the Charlotte Tilbury ones are the stickiest, but the Dior ones, I'm wearing Bandana right now. Oh, hold on. Now these aren't as shiny, but, oh my God. So I just got this, but, oh my God. Now these have no stickiness to them like no stickiness whatsoever. Mm. Let me just re-up this real quick. These smell so good. I'm gonna use these. I know I'm gonna use these all up. Wish I had the denim case to put it in, but I'm not gonna keep saying that. I'll use that for now. Like, oh, come on. I love all of these though. Chili Glaze though, I love this shade. It's really nice. It doesn't go with everything. I was thinking about getting uh, another shade I wanted the nude one but I need to just chill out because I saw that Mac is coming out with some and that'll be in my purchase or pass I think they're like shine blur lipsticks and maybe I could grab a new shade from that brand instead of just buying from the same brand so anyway <laughs> all right that's it for lipsticks so I think we are ready to talk about all of these eyeshadow palettes, all of these amazing palettes. I tried the Dollhouse palette at the very beginning of the month and I think it was a great look for Blend Bunny Cosmetics. If you're not familiar, she has three palettes. There is the Blends palette, which is the all matte rainbow palette. There's the Surge palette, which is a little more grungier and it's got a lot of rainbows, got some neons and some pastels, but then there are also some shimmers. So I think this was a great release for her brand because this was kind of like the neutral lovers palette. And what I love about this palette is that despite being neutral, you have lots of looks that you can create, but you've got these grungy, grungy mattes here and shimmers here that I really like. And I might be mistaken, but I think that the shimmer formula is an improved formula from the Surge palette. Now, if you are interested in this, I will wait for a sale because lately I've been seeing some sales on her site, but I did not have any issues with this palette. And even though it's a big palette, it's not too overwhelming to use because the way that she lays the palettes out, you can just go by column to create a nice look. That's that for the dollhouse. Now, another neutral palette that I pulled out in March was the BH Cosmetics Sugar Cone Palette from the Sweet Shops. And this was a very, very pleasant surprise for me because when I was really reviewing the Sweet Shops palettes, I was not into neutrals at all. So this was last on my list. And now I'm like, no, I would not want to get rid of my Sugar Cone Palette. I think that the neutral shades that are in here are so beautiful. I just love how you can make a light look and a deep look. And that's the case with all of the Sweet Shops palettes but the quality of this is great. And I will continue to brag about the Sweet Shops, especially since BH Cosmetics, you know, we don't know what the future holds for them, but I, I am still hoping that they'll be able to do some great things, but just look at those shimmers and how beautiful they are. Please check out Marshalls. My Marshalls did not have these, but apparently other people's Marshalls 
have the sweet shops. So they're like eight bucks, which is crazy for the quality. I'm still so happy to have those palettes in my collection. Well, since I seem to be doing all the neutrals, let's, let's go with another one. I did use the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette in Light. And I did use this when I had a little get together with my friends. This is just a really easy palette to use. It doesn't play any games with you. It's, it's gonna be fine. That's how I feel when I look at this palette. You can't make the look too deep. There are no shades that are like outliers that are not gonna go together. This is just an all in all convenient palette to use. I do prefer the dark palette more, only because the dark palette you can lighten up, but with the light palette, you can only go but so deep. There is just no issue with this palette. And I just remember really down in these palettes when they came out and now I have both. So love these, love them very much. One of the surprises I had this month was trying out the Supreme Nudes palette by Artist Couture and I will be getting the Supreme Moths palette. Yes, I will. This palette though, the fact that they included this green shade right here, that's what took it up another notch for me with this palette because when I put that shade Supreme on my eyes, honey, I am into this one, okay? Let me find some space here. What a beautiful green. I just don't even feel like I'm doing the swatch justice. This is a beautiful green. And you know, you have your traditional kind of warm tone neutrals palette, but when you put that green in there, that just gives it a little sparkle. It just gives it a little something special. It separates the palette from the rest. And that's why I'm into this. And I'm gonna be into these palettes by Artist Couture and I'm gonna continue to be on the lookout for them. I'm into it. I think we're done with the neutrals. I'm, I'm trying to keep this kind of organized. Let's talk a little more about Tasha, why don't we? In addition to pulling out my Glam Face Light palette, I did pull out two additional palettes by Natasha Denona, and one is one that I said I would go ahead and be okay with getting rid of. I kind of still feel the same way. This is Circo Loco. Now, I have to also admit that I had removed some shades and changed some things around, and then when I pulled the palette out, I didn't like that new arrangement either. So I went back to our traditional look and our traditional setup, but I think the palette looks more fun to me than the fun I have when I put it on my eyes. Does that make sense? Like, I look at it and I'm like, oh, but then when I start using it, I'm like, ooh. ooh. This is just not my favorite. There are some great shades though. So let's 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 talk about some highlights. Let's not down it completely and trash it. We've got Joker here. Love that shade, excellent shade. Snow Cone, excellent shade right here. Aerialist, excellent shade. I mean, on their own, they're excellent shades. Mm, not spiral, no, no, no. Razzle Dazzle, love that. It's just something when I am trying to figure out what I wanna do, it's just not practical. Look at that, it's gorgeous. That's Snow Cone, that's Aerialist, Joker, that, come on, Matt. I don't know why I'm just not more into this, I, I, but I'm just not. I mean, I'm into that, I'm into that, but I'm not into this palette, I've tried, I've tried. Now, I'm not gonna get rid of it though, I'm not doing that. But let me tell you what I am into. I'm into the Sunset palette, this? Do not talk to me, okay? Now you can see my excitement. This yellow here, stop the madness, okay? This is such a... This palette, perfection. Perfection. These are my shades, folks. These are the shades that get me. Like, you got your neutral stuff here. You got your little pop in case you wanna do a little extra, in case you wanna do a little razzle-dazzle. This is a great palette. I'm gonna move on, because I, I don't wanna ramble. I did try the Tammy Tanuka Playful Snake Palette. Look at these beautiful greens. Unfortunately, we cannot make purchases from Tammy Tanuka right now. Tammy Tanuka is a Russian brand, and right now they're not taking any like payments from PayPal or Visa or anything like that. So we just have to admire from afar. These are the shimmers in the palette. Just look how gorgeous they are. Look at those swatches. I did it right there, but I swatched the same shade twice. 
what I appreciate of, about her brand is that you can buy the palettes in the, the tester size. So the hoarders like me, you know, don't have all this extra product. I'm sad that her palettes are going to be suspended for right now. Her quality is so good. It's like Pat McGrath good. Like if you like Pat McGrath or Odin's Eye or anything like that, like great mattes, great shimmers, just very top notch quality. I do have some of her pigments as well, but I have not tried them yet. So definitely wanted to mention the Playful Snake and um, I can't wait to see, well, I'm, we are seeing what she's putting out, but we just can't get it yet. So, you know, I can't wait to see what those egg palettes will look like once, you know, they hatch, but it's gonna be some time before we see those, but that's okay. We also tried out the Odin's Eye Hella palette. Yes, this palette is also the bee's knees. It is so beautiful. And let me tell you something, this bottom row right here, to me, really makes the palette. This right here, I would not find as fun. I would not find it as mm, thought provoking or inspiring. But when you put this with it, it's like, hmm, got a little extra here. This bottom row, it really frosts my cookies. Let's talk about this shade double sided. Can you see the, there's some fire in that shade. Look at the shade River. And in the words of my nephew River, this shade is so tasty. Come on. Now just, just understand, that's like a multi-chrome. That's like a dual chrome, sparkly, shimmer and shine. I'm into the palette. I'm into Angelica and I'm happy for her on this collab. I would buy it again. Yes, I would. We also here have a quad by Char. This is the queen of glow. I know it looks like so many of the other things that she has out and I had a nerve to look up the new quad. No, it's the same as this. This quad performs very well. It is classic Char. You've got a nice buttery matte and you've got some cool shimmers. I don't need this. I don't need this. So this probably needs to go. Eh, you know, the only thing with getting rid of things is like, I just see that emoji with the stack of money and the wings and it just makes me feel horrible. Like I've lost my best friend. So this is just here for now, but you can really only make like one look with this. So it's kind of boring. Now a palette that I tried out that was very inspiring and interesting. And when I looked at it, I'm like, I don't even know what to do with this was the 669 palette by Martine Cosmetics. And this was a gift from my friend Jamie at Makeup Release Radar. Look at the grunginess. There are no options for anything else. This palette is for one type of person and one type of person only. This was my first time trying Martine Cosmetics, but I think the quality of this is great. And I just love that there were no fluff shades. You see what I'm saying? Like the fluff shades that they, I'm gonna put this color in for the people that like this, or I'm gonna put this color in for the people that like that. No, this palette is like for grunge lovers, okay? And that's it. If you don't like it, you're not gonna find something in there that you can work with. There are some dual chrome shades in this palette, and there they are. I think you can see those shifts there. They're pretty smooth. And I know that we've all had experience with dual chromes that may, appear a little more shifty or actually be a little more shifty, but I think these were nice and I think they look nice on the eyes. I did not have a problem with the mattes or the shimmers in this palette. So I was very happy to be gifted this palette by my friend. And yeah, this is just a grungy dream. Let's talk about the Pretty Poison palette by Notoriously Morbid. Now this was part of a collection. I got some liquid lipsticks with it as well as some crystal gem toppers. I'm gonna to focus mainly on the palette. So here is this baby here. It did so well that it did restock. As you know, I really do enjoy Notoriously Morbid. I think that their eyeshadow formula is really unique. And I think that the vision that they have for the palettes they create is just very creative. And this one was all based on like mushrooms. So like the shade names are so cute. Like I'm in truffle, smooth cremini, no cap. Fungus Among Us, Shiitake Happens. Like, I, it's it's the construction of the palette to the shade names and then the actual shades themselves. Sometimes they do include the flaky shades within their palette and they're not my favorite, but I 
am trying to learn how to work with them and most of the time I just try to liquefy them with a mixing medium. Here's one of the shades from the palette. Looks almost like the one from Odin's Eye. But look at that, look at that fire shade. I love fiery duochromes. They are so pretty and they look so good on the eye. Like sometimes you just have to turn the light off to just see the excellence. Here's a purple shade. And then look at that. There are so many different little like glitter reflex and particles that you can see in their shades. And I just think it's an amazing brand and everything is handmade. You can just tell, look at this yellow. Look at that, that's so smooth. And some of this is hard to see with the lights from the camera, but just, just a really, really great brand. Now, I think that I spoke highly of their liquid lipsticks. But the last one that I used, which I love this shade, it was the matte green one. I felt like it kind of rubbed off easily, but I probably shouldn't have been messing with my lips. So it might have been me. I'm going to have to try that out again. I do know that the metallic liquid lipsticks, I don't think I had that issue with, but the matte one I did. And when I wore the green one, cause I did a look with it and then I was talking in a video and I never even put it up because I could see that I was getting that white line, that dreaded white line. And I can't, I, and I shan't, but I do love the palette <laughs> and the brand. Another goodie that I pulled out just because Menagerie is about to be coming out with some greatness this weekend is the Indigo Ink Palette. And this one is going to be restocking on the 9th. Yes, this palette is bomb. I just remember being a little bit stumped about what to do with this palette, but I decided to do like two fresh looks with it and I love it just as much as I did before. There are just so many options here and I love the names in this palette. My favorite shade is this one, Squid Pro Quo, but oh my goodness, let me just swatch it real fast because that this one's amazing. Look at that. You can see that flip. Look at that shade. Ah, oh, that is just the best shade in the palette maybe. We also have this shade Ink Defense, which is this one. Like you can even see the colors changing on a camera right there. Like, mm-mm, that's Ink Defense. Ooh, Shell Yeah, I forgot about Shell Yeah. That's that orange one. <sighs> Hold on, look at that. Look at the glitz. Rose Quartz by Huda Beauty. Uh, do not talk to me, I understand. I understand people thought this was ashy, but no. The only negative is the Love Stone shade. But let me tell you something. These shimmers did not come to play with any of us. We have Cosmic Love. What are we doing? What are we doing? Is anybody giving Huda Beauty her flowers? Look at the shade. I can't. So that was Cosmic Love. That was this one. And then we have Blissful and Moon Magic. So let me swatch those. I mean, you're talking about some duochromes, some real ones. These are great. I don't wanna hear anything about it. The mattes, they matte, they do their job. And then she has these smooth shimmers, just nice, nice smooth little, little shimmers. I don't know if y'all can even see that. The quality of this one and this one, these are great. Now the Naughty Nudes is gonna be way better for richer skin tones, but don't sleep on rose quartz. I was really surprised because here's the thing. I don't care how light I am. Ashy can look ashy on light skin people too. I'm just saying and fair people and in all honesty, I was concerned about some of these shades looking ashy on me as well. So, you know, just because it shows up on my skin does not mean it's gonna look good. That's why I like with pastels. I just, uh, I don't know. Cause the ash. And then I tried the Sleepover Collection by Unearthly Cosmetics. And for some reason, I can't find the blushes. I thought this was a really cute palette. You know, now this is gonna be your berry tone color story. So if you don't like it, you will not find anything else in this palette. You can't do anything else with it. I, it surprised me. I, I liked it more than I thought I was going to like it. I really like the shade bouquet which is a beautiful pink. Look at that beautiful pink. Gotta go here, look at that. 
sorry to see my arm fat. Yes, so there it is, laughter. Laughter is a beautiful, almost like an icy white gold. Really pretty right there. Yes, satin, I love the shade satin, which is almost like a icy pink. <laughs> yep, that one's beautiful too. I think the quality of this palette is great. These shimmers are pretty hard packed in here. I mean, I'm just mentioning that. There's no point to me saying that. It did have a lip gloss that came out with it. And this one was pretty sheer. It's got kind of a pink tint to it. And I think the lip gloss is okay. Okay. But I thought that palette was really nice. Now the last palette that I tried this in the month of March, I think it was March, was it March? Well, we're gonna go ahead and show it anyway. Tiny Marvels, y'all, you know, brought this out, hadn't had it out in like a year and I just was thinking about it. It was for no reason and I was just like, I want this in my rotation. I wanna see, you know, do I still like this palette as much as I I remember? Because I, I wasn't hyped up about it, but I got it because I love Mel. But then I tried it and I was like, oh, I love this. And then I got like a hundred palettes and then this one kind of went by the wayside. And then I was like, do I still feel the same? Yes, I do. I do feel the same. And it hurt me to rank Enduring Love over this one. That hurt my soul. But I love this one too. It is such a good palette, such a great memory of Melon, such a, a great design, layout, color story, vibe. It just all just flows. Like look at the flow, it's just there. And I do believe it just restocked. So hopefully it is still available on Sydney Grace's website and possibly Camera Ready Cosmetics if you are interested in that. So let me grab this brush so I don't have to move it to the April video. For some reason now I feel like I had this in another video, but who knows. I'm still loving this brush. How about that? I'm still using this brush a lot. And this is from the BK Beauty and Angie Hot and Flashy collection. This is the A506 brush. And this is like the baby to the BK Beauty 101 brush. Let me grab that. It's like the mommy and the baby. You know what? I did talk about this brush because I remember saying I used to use this for my concealer, but now I use this. Well, I'm still using this. I still love this brush. I will highly recommend this brush. It is so good for getting right here for your concealer. And I do use this one every single day. Oh, I'm messing up my eye look. When I do my primer, I put my primer on and then I just use this to kind of, you know, make it even and pat it on in. So uh, let me know what you think about all of the things that I share with you in this video. Definitely leave me some comments with your thoughts. I hope this was therapy for you. It always is for me. And until I see you again, make sure you are being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice, stay safe, and I'll see y'all really soon. Bye.